Hello everybody, welcome back for another video. Hello guys, I want to do an update because we have some really fun updates today. Um, the last time you guys saw me, I was probably in shambles because, sorry, I'm on my phone, like, getting all my stuff together. So, the last time you guys saw me, I was in shambles, I was crying. I was really going through it because I have been struggling with this weight, with this weight journey for so long that I'm still struggling because I... I don't know how to hold myself accountable. So I was sitting around in my room the other day and I was thinking, what can I do to get this body right, show you guys that I can do it. Some people don't have a problem holding themselves accountable. They're able to do it, no problem. Me, on the other hand, I don't know what's my problem. I can't do it. Another gut health video. First and foremost, don't think I don't notice. A lot of you guys subscribed from my gut health video where I discussed all the things that I was struggling with in my weight gain, in my bloating, when I was dealing with IBS, and all of the severe issues I had when I was dealing with my gut health. And I wanted to do a spin-off of that video of the mental and physical life changes that I have made that have significantly improved my gut. Gut health is something that I am super passionate about because of the fact that I was dealing with so many issues for so long. It sometimes feels like an invisible illness, having IBS or GERD, acid reflux, and insomnia because you cannot sleep. And after I did research on the fact that your mind and gut are very connected, I really wanted to see was things that I was thinking about or dealing with mentally affecting my stomach and vice versa. And the truth of the matter is there were so many different factors that played into my issues. And now that I got a hold of them, I cannot wait to share with you guys the things that I have done that have completely gotten rid of my bloating, excessive weight gain. I have been able to lose 36 pounds in just a few months due to the fact that I have tackled my gut issues. I no longer have stress or anxious stomach issues. I don't know if you guys know that feeling when you go down the roller coaster and you get like that butterfly emptiness in your stomach. That was something that I would feel on a day-to-day -day basis dealing with IBS and other stomach issues. And I overall feel happier and healthier because I've tackled these issues. And I'm hoping that although I am not a doctor or a nutritionist and I want to make that very clear before we even get into the rest of the video. I think sometimes it's nice to hear from someone who has dealt with so many different things throughout the years that have made me be able to educate myself on what worked and what didn't work. And although what worked for me might not work for you, I'm hoping it at least works for at least one person. So let's just get into it today. The mental and physical changes that I have made that have completely improved my gut, that have allowed me to lose weight, to feel good, to not be bloated, to not have acid reflux, to be able to get better sleep and have a more happier productive lifestyle. Give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe down below if you guys like this type of content from me and follow me on Instagram. Now, let's just get into the video. Okay, number one, for the mental and physical changes that I made to improve my gut was I educated myself on the foods that were causing me pain. Now, there are so many different ways that you guys can do this. You can get an allergen test done, but sometimes it doesn't necessarily show up that this is an allergy or a sensitivity in your body, but that is definitely a way to go. You can also just do an allergy elimination diet. So one thing I definitely realized was the cause of my evil was eating an inflammatory diet. So I decided to go on an anti-inflammatory diet. The second I got on an anti-inflammatory diet, I saw extreme weight loss, the bloating went down, the uncomfortability stopped, and I was able to make a normal bowel movement. And I want you guys to focus on the three Fs if you are gonna get on an anti-inflammatory diet as well. It's healthy fats, healthy fish, and fiber. These are the things that will carry you through this journey. And I really find that eating in this way has helped me. I focus a lot on eating things like avocados and salmon and vegetables and fruit, things that I know are whole foods, things that I know are going to make me feel good. And some things are going to cause you more pain than others. I know for me, like onions are really bothersome to my stomach. So are really leafy greens if they're not washed well or cooked a certain way. So you gotta really figure out what it is that's causing you pain. Kind of going into the more or things that I decided to cut out was I stopped eating so much sugar, anything that was like processed that had a lot of sugar in it. And I went more towards fruit, things that I knew had good sugars in it that were gonna make me feel better. I also stopped eating processed foods and went more towards a whole food diet. I was eating plant-based for many years, if you guys know this about me. But when I transitioned from 
eating meat to being vegan, I found that I was eating a lot of processed vegan things because I wanted it to be the closest tasting thing to meat. Because I didn't go vegan because I didn't like the taste of meat. I went vegan for other reasons. And at the time, I wanted my food to taste similar. So I ate out a lot. I would explore different vegan places that had a lot of processed foods and different things like that. But I have now found that the whole food plant-based type of diet works best for me. And I will incorporate fish and things like that into my diet as well because I prefer eating a more Mediterranean style plan. I also completely cut out alcohol. You guys know this. That is also something that is going to have you inflamed, have you swollen, have you gaining weight, have you bloated, and maybe have you feeling not so great. I know for me, the older I got and the more I drank, the more I felt the repercussions the next day. Also, I like to make sure I'm eating healing nutrients and herbs, things like L-glutamine, vitamin D, omega-3s, zinc, and collagen. I love L-glutamine. If you are someone who wants to get rid of bloating, it is a great natural way to just kind of get rid of that and also help you with your bowels. I can put about a scoop of it in a water. I haven't really needed it recently, but it was something that I started doing on the beginning of my journey to kind of get everything going. Vitamin D, crucial, crucial, crucial for your mind and gut connection. If you live in the Northeast or somewhere where the winters have a little bit less sun and you're not outside as much, this is something that you want to supplement so that you feel good. Remember guys, the gut and the mind are connected. So you wanna make sure that you're mentally happy so that your stomach can be happy and vice versa. So I am making sure I'm consuming vitamin vitamin D, omega-3s are in fish, but you can also take capsules. I also think that zinc and collagen are super important for healing properties that help you with these issues as well. So that is something that I think is important, just getting on an anti-inflammatory diet, finding out what foods are causing you pain, uncomfortability, and try to stay away from things that you know for a fact are not great for you, like caffeine, alcohol, too many carbs, processed sugars, processed anything. There is a whole map of foods that are anti-inflammatory and that also help heal the gut. So definitely study up on those things so that you guys can get super educated. Okay, number two for how to improve your gut with these mental and physical changes is to reduce stress. You need to reduce your stress levels in order to improve your gut health. If you are super anxious, super stressed, overwhelmed, this is going to cause bloating, uncomfortability. You're gonna be having a lack of sleep. You're not going to be feeling well and it could cause you to even gain weight. So for me, I went back to the basics in reducing my stress. I had a certain amount of hours I was allowing myself to have screen time. I would only watch things that were positive and made me feel good. I would do certain things in nature or go outside, spend time with my dogs, doing things that made me happy and that didn't make me overthink my life. Something I know about myself is I tend to get really excited about certain projects I start and I can almost inflict stress on myself on purpose knowing that I I can handle it, but then I always end up burning out and not feeling super great. So I have found a way to balance it all and finding ways to make sure that I am regulating my happiness by balancing work, balancing self-care, balancing time alone, balancing time with friends, and just doing it perfectly, which has really helped me in my stress levels. Also, gentle exercise. I switched from high intensity, crazy, 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 to more low impact exercise. I decided to implement weight training recently recently as of like last week into my schedule again, but only once or twice a week just to do a little bit of lightweight lifting. But prior I was just walking and doing Pilates. That was literally it. So I have found that gentle exercise will reduce stress. It's going to boost your energy level and you're going to feel like a different person. I know for me, I like to move my body in the morning when I'm still a little bit tired because it almost wakes me up and gets me excited. So I'll go on a walk or I'll go to the gym and walk on the treadmill. And it's just a very simple way to get my body moving. And I have I've found that it has helped me with my gut health significantly. Also, you will see yourself dropping weight because you're eating more nourishing foods that are not causing you pain and discomfort. You're doing things that are more sound and intentional with your body. And then on top of it, you're just moving your body at the perfect rate to lose weight with all of these other factors playing in. So for me, I dropped the most weight doing the least. It's also important that you regulate your circadian rhythm. What this essentially is, is it's our internal body clock which governs our sleep and wake up schedule. And it also deals with managing our hormones. So this is something that I really want you guys to educate yourself on. Some things that help regulate your circadian rhythm that I prevented myself from doing in my new chapter is avoiding blue light before bed. So no cellular devices in bed. And if you are, wear blue light glasses. Avoiding caffeine 
later in the day. Also work when you are the most clear and when you are the most energized. I give myself a certain window of work hours where I like to film, where I like to edit, answer emails, because I know that that's when I perform my best. But the more that you actually focus on your internal body clock, when you're supposed to rest, when you're supposed to work, when you're supposed to do the most, when you're supposed to do the least, you are going to find that your body is going to naturally respond better to that. I always like to use the example of like when you eat super late at night, you get very bloated randomly and you're like, well, what is happening? But it's because your body knows it's not the time to eat, it's the time to go to bed. So you'll get bloated at certain hours of the day or doing certain things because your body knows not to have something around that time. So when you balance your food schedule, when you balance your exercise schedule, your work schedule, your sleep schedule, you will find that your gut will be happier, you will look better, and you will feel better overall. Number three for improving your gut with these mental and physical changes is healthy distractions. I talk about this in a lot of my videos, but so many of you guys ask me like, how do you prevent yourself from eating throughout the day or to not enable yourself to encourage bad habits back into your life? And for me, when I was struggling the most, I was doing the least. I found that I was always entertaining low vibe activities like watching TV all day long, not really getting work done, always doing something that I shouldn't. And that was when I would eat the most and just relax the most and do nothing the most. And it was not helping me balance my body right. So for me, I have found a better way to managing my life with my eating schedule, my exercise schedule and everything in between by having time for hobbies, passions and interests that bring me towards happiness, love, and good health and wellness. You do not overeat when this is happening because you're busy doing other things. I find that if you are someone who struggles with eating too much and you gain weight throughout the day, it's probably because you have a improper eating schedule or you are just always finding a way to have a snack, have a lunch, have another lunch, have a dinner, have a this, have a that, rather than doing things that are better for that part of the day. You know, I even like to watch TV while doing my makeup so that I'm not eating instead. And self-improvement, now actually boost your self-confidence. So the more that you improve and you see changes, you actually stick to your goals a lot easier because you're seeing your life and your body just transform before your eyes. And it naturally keeps you on the right track. Number four, and this was really big for me in actually improving my gut and finding a way to make losing weight and improving my gut and getting rid of bloating more fun was that I increased my feminine energy in wellness. When I think of feminine energy, I think of a more beautified, just such a gorgeous aura to the way people handle life. I think of slowing down. I think of intentionality. I think of just being absolutely divine. So when I have compared feminine energy in wellness to losing weight and bloating and all of these other issues, what I decided was creating a lifestyle that would feel beautiful and soft and exciting for me. So the first thing that I did was I ate with intention. Rather than stuffing your face all the time or doing things that don't feel timely or good, I find ways to be more intentional with my food. If I know I'm gonna be eating something a little bit heavier for lunch, that means you're not eating something super heavy for dinner and vice versa. Knowing when to order out and knowing when to cook. These are intentional practices that you want to implement in your life. I also would beautify my plates. When I cut up all of my veggies and my fruits, I want them to look beautiful on the plate. To me, this is very feminine. In. It creates a happy, healthy way of enjoying your wellness and enjoying your routine in your new life. I also find that slower living and slower eating equals better digestion. So essentially, I was always a slow eater. I am someone who does not have the capabilities of eating quickly, but I am even slower than before. And I find a way to eat so slow when I'm eating that I might even get full quicker than I thought because I'm allowing the food to reach my stomach and to get full naturally. If you eat too fast and you eat something in a short amount of time, you have no idea if you're full or not because you didn't give yourself the time for your mind and gut to be able to send you that signal. So for me, I eat slower. It creates a better digestive situation for me and I am able to cut my eating in half due to it, I am able to feel the best I've ever felt and I'm eating more intentionally and just more soft and slower. I also romanticize my habits, work and downtime. So for me, I have found that romanticizing my life has been the best way for me to enjoy it. I will romanticize the littlest of things like waking up in the morning, letting my dogs out, I'll put my slippers on, put my cute little robe on, make myself some tea, open up the blinds and clean the windows and just 
find a way to romanticize every little thing in my life to keep my space clean, to make me have better clarity in my day, to have a better understanding of the organization that I need to provide myself in order to achieve the most I can in the day, to also feel amazing when I do it, making sure that I do my hair and makeup to feel my most gorgeous and confident when I'm working, even if I'm working from home. And if I have to, I will go into a coffee shop and work from there to kind of switch things up. I find ways to romanticize my routine. And I also romanticize my social media break. When I take a little break from social media from the day, what am I doing in its place? I will paint, I will journal, I will plan my favorite things. Right now, I have been spending all of my days planning the interior design of my house. I will circle different pictures from magazines of like things that I love, chandeliers, drawing up different concepts, because even though I could be on my computer finding different things, I am not necessarily on the socials and interacting in a way that's not best suited for my day. Everything is done with intention, everything is done slower, and it has given me such an immense purpose, and it's helped me so much with my anxiety, my depression, and my uncomfortabilities. And in that, helps you with your gut health, you're no longer bloated, uncomfortable experiencing acid reflux, GERD, these are all stress-induced things. A lot of the times, it's a combination of diet, stress, not feeling your best, depression, mental health, all of these things. So when you tackle them all, you'll notice everything starts to align in a better way. So that is something that I've been learning. Number five for helping your gut by doing these mental and physical changes is I educated myself on happy chemicals, on the things that produce that happiness feeling in your body, which essentially are our endorphins, our dopamine, our serotonin, and our oxytocin. These are things that I have surrounded my day on now that I know what they do. So to increase your endorphins, watching a funny movie, listening to uplifting music, essential oils slash candles. I always am burning candles in my house throughout the day. The smell, the ambiance, everything about it encourages me to feel great. It uplifts me, it soothes me, and it's amazing. I watch happy things at night. I do not watch any more suspense, thrillers, or weird vibes before bed because I notice that it heightens my anxiety and it fucks up my gut. When I am watching things that make my stomach turn uncomfortable, even if it's exciting, I don't want that type of feeling in my stomach before bed. I save all of my thrillers and crazy things that I like to watch in the beginning of the day. Right now I'm watching Raising Canaan. I'm watching that in the beginning of the day. And then towards the evening, I'll watch something more lighthearted because that helps me with my gut and mind. So that is something that's important to me. Also listening to uplifting music is incredible great way to start the day and get motivated. To help with dopamine, you want to complete work tasks, eat nourishing foods, and get good sleep. That's kind of the things that helps you with your dopamine. And for me, I make sure I work between certain hours in the day. I'm eating things that make me feel good and I'm getting my rest. The older I get, the more I realize rest is so important. And without it, you're not going to be able to digest your food best. You're not gonna be able to lose as much weight. You're not going to be able to feel as great and you're gonna have a lot of uncomfortability. So romanticizing your sleep sleep schedule, making sure that you're eating good and making sure that you're working when you're supposed to is going to help you so much on this journey. For serotonin, you wanna get sun, you wanna meditate or do yoga or be outside. For me, this is huge, especially during this time of year. I am currently taking vitamin D pills. I told you guys I need to supplement my vitamin D or I will feel horrible. I will have the seasonal depression kick and I will not feel great. So I'm making sure I go outside as much as I can. When it is sunny out, I make sure I'm not cooped up in the house. I have been doing some sort of meditation before bed because I find that doing those positive affirmation meditations right before sleep has really helped me. Also, just like I said, slowing down my exercise. I don't really do yoga, but I am more slower with my workouts and my movement and it's a great way to boost your serotonin. Also for oxytocin, this is your love chemical. Spending time with family and your animals and your friends, I make sure I prioritize all of these things in my life. I don't like to spend too much time away from my family or friends, so I will make sure I schedule that in my life to help me, and I'm telling you, this does help you with your gut and mind. I promise you guys. You guys are gonna see your mental health improve and your gut health improve at the same time doing these things. Also spending time with my dogs, I make sure that I play with them at least once a day for a good amount of time, whether it's for like a half hour to an hour, we'll throw the ball back and forth and just play with a little tug of war thing. And it's just a really great way for me to feel good throughout the day, away from socials, away from people, away from anything, and just being able to focus on love and feeling good. And this has really been helping me.
those are the five things that I have done to completely help my mental and physical health that has essentially helped me improve my gut. I am the happiest I've ever been, the healthiest I've ever been. I'm seeing myself flourish in ways I never have before. I am super confident. I am able to get more things done. I am able to live an amazing social life because my stomach isn't conflicting with my life and I'm able to do things. It has just been such a whirlwind of emotions for me. So I hope that this has really helped you guys in some way and you were able to get some things out of this video. Let me know down below what things you guys have already tried and what things you guys are excited to try. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye everyone. Mwah.